Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there, hunters. Yeah, I still play Monster Hunter, sort of. Today I want to talk about the gunner meta setups for the prep for the Sunbreak release, since PC now has USJ armor, and I really don't think we're going to be getting any more weapons and armor until Sunbreak. I do want to explain what we're using and why, so there's going to be a little bit of preface here. Apologies. There's going to be a lot of information regurgitated from my previous videos, but I wanted to do this as like a one and only vid for pre-Sunbreak info. And rather than go over each of the armor sets, which would take forever, I'm just going to leave the links to the sets in the descriptions, so you can either use the Imgur links or the Monster Hunter Rise Builder link to import them all into the builder and check them out yourself. I feel it's more important to discuss, you know, the MOs, the weapons, and the skills instead, and kind of why we're using stuff rather than just show you, hey, this is what I'm using. And of course, there are a bajillion ways to make every single set and make very similar sets depending on your charms and stuff and you don't have to have perfect charms but this group of sets will assume that you do so if you're looking for non min max sets i'd recommend using the armor set search in the description to import your own charms and then try to build a similar set that way you can get very close to min max sets with any charm that has a total of like four usable level two slots and by that i mean like attack two and two level two slots or attack two wex one and a level two slot or anything that has a total of like four level two decos i can't make sets for everyone because everyone has different charms so that's gonna be on you i'm just gonna assume people are using min max charms at this point sorry and so without the armor sets here let's get into the gunner setups explain what we're using and why and lastly here we're gonna be talking about the bows and man i really went from loving bows in world to not really caring about them in iceborne to just not liking them in rise bows are way too strong anyway let's talk about some key info for bows before we dive into these weapons and setups. The first thing is that bow is entirely locked behind using the Mighty Bow Feather. It's a very specific headpiece gained from the Arena Quest tokens, and this is the only source of Mighty Bow in the entire game. Though the Mighty Bow skill itself increases your maximum bow charge from 3 to 4, which is insane, it's so much damage. Not only do you get high level shots which have more arrows and higher motion values, but you also get your charge 4 which gives you 20% more damage over charge 3. Don't associate with anyone who plays bow without Mighty Bow Feather or says you don't need it. It's a must. If you can't understand why it's crazy, just realize that the only way to get it is to sacrifice your head slot for it. There is no decorations or charm skills for it at all. Bow plays with 4 armor pieces and is still stronger than anything else by a lot. So next, let's talk about the stamina reduction cap. In World, we were kept at 50% reduced stamina usage, but here in Rise, it's actually 75%, although that does require things like hunting horn buffs and cat buffs and stuff. Realistically, a solo hunter can get to 62.5% less stamina usage, which is that cap, which is really noticeable compared to just 50%, trust me. There are some diminishing returns for stamina reduction though, like Dongo Fighter grants you 20% by itself, but with Con 4 giving you 40%, you're only going to get to 50%. Same with Dash Juice, which is 25%, and then Con 4 will get you to 55%. You can get the soft cap to 62.5% with Con 4, Dash Juice, and Eating for Dongo Fighter. Or just Con 5 with Dash Juice works, but I don't see the point in getting another rank of Constitution when you could just eat for Fighter. And lastly, Bow is still a very versatile weapon. Pretty much all of its switch skills and silk mines are good to use and have some situations where they're preferred. So I do want to quickly go over each of them and give their pros and cons to them, but ultimately, it's your choice on what you want to use. So first is the switch skill for Power Shot or Absolute Power Shot. Absolute Power Shot basically gives you KO on all your Power Shots and Aerial Shots. It's relatively small, it's like 20 or something build up. You can get like one KO in a fight pretty reliably though. Paired it with exhaust coats though, and it makes the first KO very fast, and you can plan your hunt around setting up that KO whenever you want. The downside to absolute power shots is that it consume much more stamina than normal shots, like 25% more. It's a lot. You can't just dash dance as much with absolute power shots. So depending on your target and if the exhaust coats are going to cover your KO or not, you may not want to use it over the standard power shot. Next is the charge slide versus dodge bolt. So the standard charge slide will give you plus one charge when you slide and moves you a pretty good distance, allowing you to chase down monsters while building charges and it's nice for chaining staggers on monsters that like you know move backwards when you stagger them so you can keep up your aggression. Dodge Bolt doesn't let you slide very much nor does it grant any charges so it does fall behind literally on monsters that roll backwards on stagger and you're trying to you know pump out more arrows. 
What it does provide though is plus 2 charges if you successfully use it to parry an attack, as well as giving you a 50 motion value melee stab if it connects. This is incredibly powerful to parry roars and monsters with multiple hit combos, and is overall the more preferred choice in hunts, unless again you know what you're doing and you're trying to just chain staggers. Running your sets with Evade Extender 1 also makes Dodgeball move a similar distance compared to Charge Slide, which is amazing. And then lastly, we have Focus Shot versus Aerial Aim Silk Binds. And at first glance, you're probably asking why you would ever use Focus Shot over Aerial Aim. Well, Aerial Aim is good, but due to Wyvern writing, it can end up being a DPS loss if you have to disengage that before continuing on your assault. And while it's strong, it does eat a ton of stamina. Focus Shot, on the other hand, does have decent iframes to dodge roars and essentially refills your stamina back to full. Though, if you have Stamina Surge 3, it's not usually required. Herculean Draw tends to be better use of your Silk Binds, in my opinion. Okay, that's enough bow and fought out of the way, let's start getting to the bow shot patterns. So, each bow type is viable and does have some niche uses, but I personally just prefer rapid shots. Spread bows are incredibly hard to land consistently, but they do do the most damage, and Pierce requires you to stay further back, and requires you to really aim your arrows carefully, uh, which is kind of sucks for dash dancing, but you can make it work. Especially here on PC where Pierce gets extra ticks, it's really strong. To me though, Rapids just feel the most consistent as all the arrows typically drop on the same spot and the critical distance is solid on both ends. So starting with Rapids, this is easy, we're all going to be using Rampage weapons. Rampage bows are nasty, they have everything going for them except slots. We have the same armor set and setup for all the Rapid bows, just swap the elemental decos. Unlike World, we're not focusing on elemental damage, here it's just a bonus. Raw scales super hard and rise, and crit element is pretty awful, so yeah, we're going full raw on bows. Element is just an afterthought, which is why we don't even have level 5 elemental attack on most of our sets. For the dragon bow though, we can use the abushi bow. The only difference between this and the rampage bow is like 5 raw or 5 element, which is a difference of like 1 damage depending on your target if it takes more raw or more element. So pick whatever you want. For spread bows, we have two non-rampage options, and honestly, not a huge fan of rampage spread. Anyway, Camellia's Bow is a great raw spread option. It's really good. Not only does it have solid raw and bow charges, but it's got slots making gearing for it really easy. You can use Camellia's Soul if you want, or just go for the attack rampage. This bow is particularly good against something like Valfob, who does not take elemental damage when he's glowing, and his gunner hit zone is the wing joint, which is also not good for Pierce. We can also use the USJ Bow for water spread options against something like Teostra, as it is better than Pierce or Rapids. And while we used to use the Emulgence Bow for spread water, since it did have elemental exploit, the difference in raw and charge level here are a bit too much to ignore, and it does start to outshine Emulgence. I augmented this one for water, because I don't particularly want the extra crit, we're not really doing crit stuff. The other elements, you can use the Rampage options, as we don't particularly have good spread options in my eye. It's the same setup for all the bows, just change the element of your bow and your elemental decos. Your choice on either running Attack 4 versus Crit I4, but I prefer Attack 4 since it's more reliable. And then lastly, we have Pierce Bows. Naga Kuga is still great for raw Pierce since it has a natural 40% affinity, making going crit super easy. Outside of that though, the only non-Rampage bow we have is the Rachnikadaki bow for Pierce Fire. The extra slots let it grab level 5 fire attack and makes gearing for it super easy as well. It also has just got a nice fat chunk of fire on it. Rest of the elements is going to be doing rampage pierce bows and again we have the same template you just have to swap your element and you can freely change around the decorations as much as you need. Bows are kind of easy to gear. But there are some last bits of talking points for bows before I go. First is that yes, you do need to make a lot of Rampage bows if you're going to main bow. Maybe in Sunbreak we'll get better options, but since Rampage is returning, we'll be upgrading these into G ranks it seems. Next is that yes, bow power shot bug is still working on PC, and yes, that's why I don't play bow. If you're not in the know, you can cancel bow's attack animation out of a slide into power shot and still get the first shot of arrows, so you can essentially get double the arrows in just a few frames. It's pretty broken, bow's broken, and I really hope it's fixed in Sunbreak. Also, you'll notice that all our armor sets are running Reload Speed 2. That is because Reload Speed does actually increase the speed in which you can load your uh, bow coatings. And if you have Reload Speed 2, bow coatings are instant, so you actually don't have to stop to change your coatings around. It's just up and down on your, you know, ammo scroll and you're good to go. Which makes using the exhaust coatings for KO very handy. Lastly, don't use Dragon Pierce. Anyway, that's all for me. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in Elgato. Good luck out there, hunters.